So what we make of all this? Comparing teeth and implant. It would appear that in the literature, the consensus is that health around natural teeth can be maintained without keratinized tissue. Those are the long-term studies by, by Dorfman and Linde and his group, provided there is an excellent, excellent oral home care. This may not be applicable to implants because of the anatomical and structural differences of the implants. So let's look at those differences. How is an implant and the periodontium around the implant different than the periodontium around the tooth? We have four components here which are going to be affected when you remove a tooth. The periodontal ligament, the vascular supply, connective tissue, and junctional epithelium. So this is the periodontal ligament, and this is the implant. So what you see, while well, we are lacking the parental ligament when we have an implant, why is that important? Well, because the parental ligament has a lot of cells, vasculature, nerves, cells that can fight infection, cells that are involved with inflammation. And so removing that component will make that site, that area, less um, it will make that area more difficult, they, they will have a uh, harder time to fight infection where you don't have that periodontal peri uh, peri um, ligament. Vascular supply, that's a big one as well, because as you can see here, uh, around the tooth you have three ways of vasculature, the PDL, the periosteum, and then intra marrow. All this creates here an area where we have plenty of blood supply. And with blood supplies come what? The cells to fight infection, PMNs, etc. So when you don't have that, like when you have an implant where the PDL is gone, you don't have all this anastomosis that takes place in this collar area, which is one of the very critical areas because once the collar here is broken, then the infection can travel directly into the bone marrow. So this, as it says here, limited blood supply makes the pre-implant tissues less resilient to both mechanical and microbiological insults. Connective tissue. Okay, now here you see that this is a cross-section of fibers in a, in a tooth, and when you, you have those fibers that do attach from the cementum to the attached gingiva, and creates some kind of a cuff of a seal around the implant. Now, when you have an implant, these are gone because there's no cementum, there's no attachment, and you have those fibers that are still present. Now, the interesting part is that when you have mucosa, those fibers are kind of parallel. But when you have keratinized tissue, those fibers insert perpendicular or are present perpendicular to the implant, creating a cuff like. Let's see if I can master the mouse here. Okay, here it is. It's an immobile mouse. Uh, here it is, okay. Well, next time I'll have to bring my pointer. That's <laughs> All right, so you have the, a, a cuff-like effect that is not existing if you don't have keratinized tissue. So another reason to add keratinized tissue when you're doing your implants, because it will add you an extra safety. Finally, the junction epithelium, which is also very different in the tooth and the implant. In the tooth, it's shorter. In the implant, it's much longer, and also much thinner. And as you recall, you know, for your days in dental school, 
the junction epithelium acts like a zipper. If there's plaque, it stays. If there's no, I'm sorry, if there's no plaque, it stays attached. If there's plaque, it opens up very, very quickly. And that's especially true if it's long and thin, like when you have it around implants.